What was the seminal moment for Generation X that kicked open the door to our musical minds? Let's drop the needle on that experience and how the aftermath affected our culture. Hey music junkies, Professor of Rock here with your latest pop fix. Every week, as you know, we go in depth on the greatest songs in pop history with the artists and the writers who created them. You know, it's hard to believe that the end of the 90s was almost 20 years ago. For me, when somebody says 20 years ago, I think of the 80s. I think I'm in denial that I'm getting old, but nonetheless, when I think of the 90s, I think of grunge. It's just the way it is. Yeah, I know there was, there was other music. People could argue that there was much more within music than the long sleeve, plaid, flannel, guitar-driven Seattle sound. I mean, Whitney Houston and Mariah Carey and Boys to Men, they were sabotaging the charts. And at the end of the 90s, you had Britney Spears and the, the boy bands, Backstreet Boys and InSync coming on strong. But nobody can deny that Generation X's official Beatles on Ed Sullivan moment, if you will, was the moment that we first saw the music video for Smells Like Teen Spirit. If you were anywhere from age 11 to 19 in late 1991, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, one week Guns N' Roses Use Your Illusion was at the top of the charts and the hair metal was still all the rage. And then next week, Nirvana exploded and it wiped everything. And I mean everything off of the map. You know, I was talking to Ann Wilson of Heart and she defined it almost perfectly. Take a look at this. It was a weird time because the 80s had turned into the 90s, but it wasn't the 90s yet. It was still the 80s, even though it yeah. was 1990, 91. And then all of a sudden, it's out of nowhere. It smells like teen spirit. It's like... It, that was one of those tsunami moments. Wow. Where wash away everything that came before it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Think about it. Nirvana came at a time when the 90s had no idea who or what it was. It was like this lost decade that was still in denial that it was even the 90s. It's, it's like it felt like it was still the 80s. Uh, what I mean is that music was very stagnant. And everybody knows how much I love the 80s, but 1990 and the first half of 91 was the time of the overexposed bad 80s. It's like someone forgot to tell the music side of things that we were in a new era. So right before Nirvana hit, it did look like the new era might still take that alternative route, but it looked like it was going the route of like EMF and Jesus Jones, which wasn't a bad thing because these were great bands that had that big flashy yet edgy hit song. And then you had the charts being bombarded by the likes of Michael Bolton and New Jack Swing. Rock and roll was really in the back seat and it was represented by bands like the Scorpions and Extreme. And then Kurt Cobain comes in and he knocked down the walls of the status quo with Nevermind and nothing was ever the same. When I found Nirvana, it hit <laughs> me so hard. It changed my life. Yeah, that was kind of like our Ed Sullivan moment, right? It was like that scene from Wizard of Oz where suddenly <laughs> just the world is in color. Yeah. I was a completely different human after that. You know, Kurt Cobain, he never seemed comfortable with fame. He was more, he was probably more like us than we even initially imagined like a stranger in a strange land who exposed the, the posers and the fakes and elbowed his way through the crowd to, to let his voice be heard, and it, and it was. And it completely ripped the mainstream up and it gave voice to the voiceless. And that's why we all related to him. I never liked how the powers that be uh, called music that he made and many others that came before him and after alternative music. It was like this lazy catch-all for any music that was outside of the, the mainstream of popularity. Yet Kurt Cobain was the very definition of alternative. He was the symbol of a movement that shined its light on the forgotten, the, the outcast, the downtrodden, the invisible. He gave us a platform. And whether he liked it or not, he was our leader. 25 years ago, he passed away. For Generation X, my generation, it was a moment that 
that I've told my kids about, and I'm sure you have too. It's like when people used to talk about exactly where they were when JFK was assassinated. It definitely left a hole that hasn't been filled, and rock and roll really has never been the same. So please join with me as we remember Kurt Cobain, the prophet of grunge. His legacy lives on. Please leave some insight or a comment about his, his artistry, his songs, his music. You can go to professorofrock.com and, and watch our 90s mini documentaries on some of the greatest songs of that era. And please subscribe to this channel. Hit that button for all the updates to help us build this community where the music always, always comes first. So until next time, I'm the Professor of Rock. See ya.